fall it's breed with Arco Iris Ranch and it is now the end of November so I figured I'd go ahead and do my November garden tour and show y'all how things are looking. We have had a few nights that have gotten down to 32 degrees maybe a little bit below that but not much really right around freezing. So I did lose some things unfortunately but there are a lot of things that are still doing good so I figured I'd go ahead and bring y'all along so we can see. So the dahlias right here, I did go ahead and just cut them back. So apparently here where I'm at in zone 8A, we can actually keep them in the ground. I know they're not in the ground, but I am going to try to keep them in the pots and just see what they do. And hopefully they do okay. And this strawberry right here seems to be liking the cold. Over here are my Bonnie hybrid cabbages. You can see down there, they are starting to head up. So those are doing really, really good. So I have those three on that side, those three on this side over here. I do have a little gym lettuce right down there. That's the only one that grew. That sad little salad mix, that's the only thing that has popped up and it's definitely not looking very good at all. The strawberries really seem to be liking the cold. I'm excited for those two to turn red. And then there's a couple back there and then as you can see there's a flower there and there's a flower down in there as well so i'm excited to actually get some strawberries the brussels sprouts that i got aren't really doing much i don't even know if they've grown at all honestly but i'm gonna leave them in there see what they do this one's been getting eaten by something as you can see but that one's looking good that one. That one's acting weird down in there. This one's definitely a lot smaller. Now from the frost, this is what the peppers have done. Just the tops of them. You can see there, that damage. This one's a lot more obvious right there but as you can see there are still peppers down in there doing really really good my daughter and I came through and we picked so many peppers if you saw my Instagram then you saw how many peppers we had the other day but these are all the ones that we had left because they weren't done but they don't seem to be bothered by the frost at all we actually still have flowers all right there and up here on this one so even though we've had frost and you can see that it's definitely damaged the plants, the peppers seem to still be going good. So that Brussels sprout right there, you can actually see has gotten bigger. So that's the one I'm most excited for and hopeful that it'll actually do something. That one's a little bit bigger. That's a little bitty guy right there. Strawberry still doing really good there in the middle. And then here's my favorite, my Ruby Perfection Cabbage. I have this one right here, and then I have this one right here. Unfortunately, lots of worm damage on these. You can see even down in the head, and this one as well. Now, I have been checking on them and pulling the worms off but unfortunately they have gotten to my cabbages. This poor little cabbage right here, that cabbage has just been completely eaten, but I don't know if it's by the worms or something else. I have no idea, but that little guy, I'm just keeping it there to hopefully attract and keep whatever's eating it onto this one and not have it do the same thing to this one and that one right there. Over here are my bull's blood beets. Now, this spot right here is where I had the zinnias, the pretty pink ones, but the frost did completely take those out. So this one, you can actually see, that's not really doing much right there. It's grown something, but not hardly anything. But, I don't know if you can see, it's right all in between my fingers right there. 
That one's actually growing something. And then that one down there, let me see. You can kind of see it's growing something right there as well. So that little guy's not doing good. And like this one right here, we can go ahead and pull it up so I can show you. That's all it's done is that right there. Oh, now the roots broke off. But unfortunately, it didn't really do anything. But there's two of them that look promising. I haven't even checked this one. Hmm. It might have something going on. But we'll see. I'm assuming those will be ready to harvest soon. I've never even eaten a beet, so I don't really know. But the leaves are really pretty. They're really a pretty color. Now here is where the broccoli... This is a lieutenant broccoli. And then that is a snow crown cauliflower right down there. So these, you can also see lots of damage on these. All the leaves look really, really sad. But, see what I can show you. Can you see down in there? There's a baby broccoli head in there. So I'm really excited for that. I recently found a really good broccoli cheddar soup recipe that I like. So I'm excited to grow my own broccoli here. I don't think the other ones are growing any broccoli heads, but that's pretty exciting. This is the cauliflower. I hadn't seen if it's doing anything. That's all that's down in there right now. So going to keep an eye on that for sure. Now what's weird are the worms aren't bothering this at all. Only the broccoli, even though they're right next to it, it's only damaging that and it's not touching this. So hopefully that stays that way. So these are my, these are the rainbow carrots on this side, I believe. And a few of them are doing pretty good. This is my most promising one right here. So we'll see if we get any carrots. Unfortunately, if you can see, something is eating all the tops of the carrots off. There's all those, those right there, and those ones over there, you can't even hardly see that there's carrots over there because something, like I said, has eaten the tops off. It's actually starting to do it on these ones as well. You can see right there, right there. I don't see any bugs on here right now, so I don't know exactly what's doing it, but I'm hoping I'll still get at least a couple baby carrots. Over here, the frost has completely taken out my beans. That one and that one look so sad. And I was super excited because it was finally starting to climb up the trellis right here. But I won't be getting any beans from my Scarlet Runner beans. Now my Swiss chard is doing really, really good. These ones are still on the smaller side, but look at these ones right here. Look at that color. That is just so beautiful. I actually pulled one of these off the other day and I was on the phone with my sister and she was like, now take a bite of it. And I did. And it was not the most delicious thing. I don't know if I need to pick them when they're more this size right here. But that size right there did not taste good raw to me. So, I don't know. But, I just like how pretty it is. That color is beautiful. So, right here was where all my scarlet kale was. And, that is basically the only thing left. I think there's actually... Mm, oh, yeah, right here. That's, that's it. That's all that's left. They started growing and then something ate them and that's it. So I unfortunately won't be getting any of the big purple scarlet kale. These are my scarlet nantus carrots. As you can see, I have not thinned them at all whatsoever. These ones right here are super, super small. These ones are a little bit bigger, but to be honest, I really don't know if I'm gonna get any carrots. But we'll see. First time growing carrots. There's another view of all that Swiss chard. So beautiful. There's a bunch of little baby ones down there too. 
So we'll see if I get any Scarlet Nantis carrots. So besides losing all my zinnias, losing the beans, getting a little bit of damage to the peppers over there, everything actually has done really, really good in the frost. Now I know a lot of places are actually getting snow and getting negative temperatures. We don't normally see that here in Texas where I'm at, but just getting down to the frost, it did actually take out something. So I'm happy to see all the things that are, that are still growing. This is my first year gardening, and so this is definitely my first fall garden, and I will continue to garden. I really, really enjoy it. Some of the flowers out here are doing really, really good. I did lose some of the flowers and have to pull them. Uh, let me go ahead and turn y'all around and show y'all those. So on the flowers on the front of the garden, I did pull out a few things. So there was a sweet potato vine all the way down there at the very, very end next to this one. There was a sweet potato vine right here. There was a sweet potato vine right here. And then there was another one down there. Sweet potato vines, the first frost that we got, those did not look really good at all. So I went ahead and pulled all those out. This right here is my Head Over Heels Passion Hibiscus. Really beautiful flowers. This one had really, really pretty fall colors as well. Most of the leaves, as you can see, have fallen off now, but this was really, really pretty. These down here are my two flocks. These ones were pretty much dead from the top, but I'm hoping the roots are still okay. So I left them in there, so we'll see on that. This is my gardenia right here. It is also did not look very good and was almost dead, but I'm hoping the roots will still survive. So we'll see on that one. I don't know what this one is. I had this one in a pot over on my porch and I went ahead and got rid of that pot so I just stuck it in, in over here. I don't know if it's a perennial annual or what, but it's really, really pretty. So I figured I'd at least enjoy it for a little bit longer. This right here is my ornamental onion. I pulled out all the bloom stalks, except for this one right here, but it comes out so easily. And it's definitely starting to look pretty bad. I'm getting ready to do some research on taking care of plants for the fall. So I know that one I have to cut back. I wanna say I need to cut this one back as well, but I'm not 100% sure. This right here is my butterfly bush. You can see some of the flowers right there. So it didn't do too terrible in the frost. My double scoop mandarin echinacea is actually putting off a lot of new flowers. You can see that one right there, that one. This is what it looks like. This one's actually been open for a while. So that's, you can see it's starting to brown on the edges. Same thing with that one. But there's a new flower back there as well. So the echinacea seems to be doing really, really good. This one is my Lily of the Nile, I believe. Um, that one, I only had one bloom stalk on it and the flowers were really, really pretty, but I didn't get any more bloom stalks. So as you can see, it's doing the same thing as that right there. Leaves are starting to turn yellow. So we'll see how that one does. The Pavonia rock plant has not had any issues with the frost at all whatsoever. Got a few flowers on it. This one, let me see if I can find one. This one right here, you can see the seeds in there. So I've been actually taking those seeds and just sprinkling them down below. I really, really like this plant. The star of this planter is the salvia. This is absolutely beautiful. That color, especially up against that, that pink right there. I love this combination so much. So this is two plants. Absolutely beautiful. I did just stick a petunia in there and looks like I have some seed pods to collect from. All those little things right there. You can get tons of seeds out of those. The passion fruit vine is still doing okay. I don't have any open flowers right now, but I did actually have one the other day. So it doesn't seem to be getting too affected by the frost. The leaves are turning a little yellow, but it's still going strong. And then I also have the salvias on this side as well. Not as showy as those, 
but still beautiful. The same kind, just that one looks a little bit better on the other side. My mom's have seen better days. I'm really bad at coming out and pruning them, but I did prune them all pretty good, except for that one. A couple flowers need to come off. But I don't know if that's from the frost or maybe they need some water. Not sure on that. This is another one of my hibiscus flowers. It was really tall. I did cut it. I don't know if I was supposed to do that or not. But I'm going to wait till it all dies and then cut it all the way down. So these zinnias still have some pretty flowers on them. But it did look like it got hit by the, the frost. But I still have a few more buds, so we'll see if those open or not. My Gara still looks really, really pretty. It doesn't seem to be affected by the frost at all. We got some flowers right there, back there. Good amount of flowers back there. That is one of the asters. You can see two of the purple flowers right there. I need to prune that. And then we have the lantana. We have the white lantana and the purple lantana. And then I can't remember what that plant was that was attached to it. Some kind of rock plant, I believe. But you can see that really, really pretty bloom right there. And then this is my Duranta Sweet Memories. I've actually struggled with this one the whole time since I've had it. It had all these really pretty purple flowers on it and it was covered when I got it. And it's really just looked really sad this whole time it's kind of yellow so i need to do some research and figure out what it needs but the flower beds are still doing okay and then i forgot in the corner of the garden i do have that echinacea as well and you can see it has a few flowers on it and it has a new flower coming down there at the bottom so this is my flower bed on the other side of the garden so that is another Head Over Heels Passion Hibiscus. It's basically looked like that since I got it, but that's the one I got on sale for $2. I'm just hoping that it survives. And then a few of the pansies down here in the front, that one unfortunately died. And then if you watch the video where I planted all these, this is the bed that I had the mishap with the anemones. They are growing. There's all those that one and there's a bunch right there so those are those will look really really pretty when they bloom these flax lilies are still doing okay all the irises and pansies that aster doesn't have any flowers on it but it doesn't seem to be affected by the frost this hyssop is still looking really pretty Look at that. And the bees love this. When I come outside in the morning, there's bees all over this. And then we got pansies. That one's not looking too good. But then we have that one that's really, really pretty. And then over here, I have more of the lieutenant anemones growing all sporadic all over and there's some right here and then there's a few popping up over here the pansies are still doing okay and then this rose bush the leaves are starting to yellow so i need to look that up and see what needs to be done to those and then Elena's mom is looking really, really pretty. So I'm pretty happy with how everything is looking. As you can tell, I have lost a few things and some things aren't looking too good, but there's a lot of things that are still doing really, really good. So as the temperatures get colder and we have more frost, things might obviously start going downhill a little bit faster, but for now I'm going to soak up and enjoy everything that I do have that is still growing. Thank you so much for hanging out with me in my garden today. I hope your garden is bringing you as much joy as mine is for me. If you haven't already, please hit that subscribe button. That would really mean a lot. Thank you so much for watching. We'll see you in the next video.